Pro. I am the uh, founder and uh, co-host, I guess I'm the only host now, of, uh, of Florida JS, also known as Boca JS. If you guys saw any kind of a link, uh, that will be uh, where you guys uh, find more information. Florida JS. Dot com is our true name. Boca JS was our old name. And because of the issues we've had with Zoom, what we had is we wanted to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, let everybody know that they can link and find us here. We might not be here. Uh, we meet once a month, every Tuesday of the of the of the uh, of the uh, 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 month, the first Tuesday of the month. Pardon me. And so uh, you will be able to find that in the future. Uh, we will always meet at meet.floridajs.com. By that time, sort of the, the, the cash issue of it still pointing to Zoom should be re resolved. And if there's a brand new uh, uh, information that we should be resolved as well. So realize I'm in there twice. Let me go ahead and get rid of one of mine. So you only see one of me. Um, the other one is, is recording. We go to uh, uh, youtube.com slash floridajs where you can see the channels of the videos of what's going on as well as other meetups, including uh, next week's .NET, um, not .NET Miami, that's gone, FLA.net. Uh, but we're here to hear one of the best speakers I've ever had in, sorry, Todd, one of the best speakers I ever had in the uh, channel, in the group. Uh, Jonathan actually uh, met and, and became, uh, well, you know, what you will see, a t teacher uh, because of his presentation and his amazing skills in there. Todd was just blown away. And so, therefore, that's... No, I would say despite. Despite, despite his, the fact the presentation was there, presentation. he did get a job. And despite his presentation skills being shown on YouTube, City Furniture and all the other people that hire him to do amazing, magical work have, have reacted. Um, he presented uh, React uh, Native. I knew about React. I loved React. And then it was native. It's something that I'm very passionate about. Grab your HTML skills, HTML, CSS, uh, all these wonderful th skills I've been honing for the last 20 years and may go into web. And he's like, it's a piece of cake. Just grab all your HTML and throw it out the window. And then, boom, you are on, on, on the mobile. And I said, what? And he goes, don't worry about it. We can still do the web. So here he is, Jonathan Sanchez, one of the best people I know. Uh, lives uh, came from the beautiful country of Colombia. Unfortunately, he chose the one the one location in Colombia where it's called Bogota, and now he's here to present us React Native for web, but in the future, React Native for web for mobile. So, Jonathan Sanchez, you're all on. Yes, Let's sir. Hear it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Damien. Thank you. Um, Awesome having you guys here. Thank you for taking the time and um, checking out this presentation. So let me share my screen real quick here so we can get started. So screen this one. Okay. Cool. Just a side note, are you, Jonathan, you're actually from Boca Raton of Colombia? Boca Raton, Colombia, yes. Oh wow, you are actually is, from there? Did you say Boca Raton? Did I say Boca Raton? Yeah, you said Boca Raton of Colombia. I think you misheard Ahmed. It's Bogota. Bogota. But what? For, uh, so you remember how you, you said, uh, Ahmed, that your name is not Ahmed, it's Ahmed? So this is not yeah. Bogota, it's Bogota, <laughs> as in not the kind of city we live in, Bogota, but the city in yeah. Colombia, Bogota. Oh, well, good. Okay, 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 okay. Yes. okay I, thought you're, you're, I thought you're, you're right. I, okay, got it, got it. Yes, so the, the, capital, okay. the capital of Colombia is actually Boca Raton. I ask everybody to, <laughs> after we see this amazing presentation, you go back to youtube.com slash FloridaJS and see if I mispronounce the word Bogota with Boca Raton. In both words, they're Spanish, so I could have. It would have been made a lot of sense. Jonathan, take it away. There we go. All right. Yes, I'm from... Um... Boca Raton, Colombia. Um, guys, so I wanted to ask you, uh, um, so most of us are, are developers, right? I mean, you want to be here unless you're, you're either looking into software engineering or you're already a developer. So I wanted to ask you, like, how many of you guys have built a, a spa web application in, like, a JavaScript library like React, Vue, or Angular? Let me see if I can see some hands on there. Uh, yeah, he said Bogota. Okay, James has. James, well, what have you used before? Like Vue or React? Angular Ionic, nice. Ionic's really cool. Um, okay, 
So that's with, with the web application. So how about, have any of you guys built with the same library or framework a mobile application? Has any of you guys built a mobile application with a JavaScript library? Okay, not yet. Cool. Bob was waving. Bob was waving. Uh, me. No, you, don't, you don't count, uh, You don't count. You don't count. I don't count. I'm not. I'm not. All right. Cool. I and once built a mobile app uh, with only zeros because the ones were not invented yet. Did I do uh, that joke already? I did that joke already. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> And native script Angular, nice. Okay, cool. All right, so, all right, so, cool, nice. I wanted, I wanted to see more or less. I want to feel the uh, the audience and see what we got here. So, yeah, coded once and built for many, right? So let's let's dive into it. So be, before I before we get into it, just a brief intro of uh, who who am I. I'm currently working at City Furniture. I'm a software engineer there. I, I also um, teach from time to time in Boca Code. I used to work there full time. I'm an FIU. Um, I went to FIU to get my bachelor's there. And um, I was one of the lead um, mobile developers on legacy research. And before that, I used to be uh, big into IT. I used to be, um, I used to be in the IT support in Carnival Cruise Lines. Uh, I've been always been an entrepreneur, had restaurant and a couple of other different businesses until my wife um, got scared and she's like, nope, you're gonna do something you're really good at. So um, this is my two little girls, Nia and Anna Lee. Um, and actually this is my three little girls here, uh, my furry one. And when I'm not at their dance recital or like uh, following them around with volleyball, volleyball practice, soccer practice, or whatever. You might catch me at uh, Tin Roof or Throw Social or one of those cool places where we play. I'm, I'm a drummer. I've been playing for a while. And actually, drumming is what got me into um, into into software and web development. Um, back in the days of uh, front, front Page and Macromedia, when, back when Flash was a thing, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you my age, but Google it. <laughs> yeah, I know Damien and Todd and a couple other ones here uh, might remember some micromedia days. And um, so that's what got me started. So let's start with this. Like, what is the number one question that we ask ourselves when we are starting a brand new project, right? So um, is it gonna be a web? Is it gonna be an app? or a desktop, right? Why is that important? Because we have to obviously either learn the language and with that, the framework. So if we're gonna write it in iOS, we have to learn Swift. If it's uh, Android, we use Kotlin, Flutter, the new uh, the new hot item there from Google, Xamarin or Java or C Sharp and uh, C++. And if it's gonna be web, then we have to pick either React, Vue, Angular. So there's tons of, of uh, technologies out there, frameworks, libraries to build all types of, of, uh, of projects, right? So, man, like we have to like learn all this stuff. Who remembers me as a butthead? Come on, get, show me some, show oh, me yeah. some stuff. <laughs> Rue, you, Rue, Rue, you know me as a butthead? No, man. I'm, I don't think you 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 were alive when. Hell yeah! Nice, nice. Yeah, it's one of my favorite um, characters there. So, what about if you could have one source code, one monorepo, as they like to call it, um, for all of these devices, right? So that's what we're here today. Yeah. Also, I give you React Native. So with React Native, not only you could build cloth platforms. Yeah, your user is going to have a better experience because it's going to be a native application, not a web um, application that is just responsive. It's going to lower your development cost because you don't now you don't have to have a Kotlin expert, a Swift expert. Now you can have a React expert and just build for any of these things. So that with that you can reuse the code also in a lot of different ways. Okay, so. 
why React Native? Why is it so hot? Well, a couple of the big names are using it currently, like Uber Eats or the Instagram app. It's all built in React Native. Um, Tesla uses it, Pinterest, all these big names here. And you can definitely find a lot more. Coinbase. Coinbase, yeah, that's a good one. Nice. And even uh, crypto.com too. Um, that they have a really nice UI. So why why the hype with React Native? So because once you learn React and you're a web and you're building web applications, you can still you, you still use the same fundamentals for React Native. You can still use somewhat of the JSX um, the JSX uh, syntax, and you can still use your class or functional components. Even do the same thing with states and props. Even all of the hooks, including Redux and even Saga, which is very, very interesting. So React Native, the best in class framework for building native apps, Android, iOS, and more, right? So React by itself is not a framework. It's a library. And as you can see here, the green is, the, is React. And you, you consume that library inside of your code, where React Native is a framework in the framework, you apply your code to that framework. Okay, so let's see. But there's some there's some differences, right? So we have in in React or in regular HTML, we use divs to to have block level elements. But in React Native, we have to use the view or scroll view, and there's a couple of more. And notice that they're cap they're um up, not uppercase, they're capitalized because there are components, they're native components for React Native. If it was a, just regular text like P or a, a paragraph or a span, then you would use the text. Flex is also interesting because all of a sudden, as soon as you apply display flex, um, it's going, and the web, we all know is gonna go horizontal, but in native, it's gonna go to a column view. For buttons, the same thing, it has, has to be capitalized, button, touchable opacity. Button is very uh, restricted in React Native. So we use touchable opacity and there's a couple of new ones that just came out with React um, 0.63, that's at 64.3 that just came out. Image like that and on and on and on. So there's a lot of differences on that. Um, so what exactly is React doing? So let's take, let's take for example, the view tag. So if once you apply the view tag, React Native, it translates for Kotlin, something that's called View Group. I don't know Kotlin, but I know that View is going to work for Android and it's going to translate into View Group. And for iOS, it's going to turn it into Swift, into UI View. And React Native does all of that for us. Okay. So how does it how does it do it? So here's a um, Here's a, a, a regular React component where for the regular React JS, it compiles and it goes into the, the DOM, the browser DOM. But then React Native uses a bridge where it translates, it translates entirely your code so that natively you can run it on these devices here. So let me um, scroll over here so I can see more of my notes. Cool. Uh, yep. Okay, cool. Then, so a little bit about the React Native architecture. So it uses a bridge that's called the bridge, but it, that's what it does. It bridges everything you that you write in JavaScript. It, it um, translates it into native code for those platforms that we just talked about. Okay. And then, so in, within React Native, we have two flavors. One of them, we have the React Native CLI, okay? And I don't know if you guys have uh, done work with, with uh, React Native CLI, but this is only this only applies for Macs. But if you were to if you want to, if you want to build an iOS app, you have to download Xcode, which right now is about fifteen gigabytes because it comes with all the iOS simulators. You have to install CocoaPods, configure CocoaPods, um, and React Native comes with its own Metro bundler, which helps you uh, translate your code on the fly. 
if you were to um, code for um, I, um, for Android, then you need Android Studio separately. You will manually have to configure your key store. You, you, you have to use either um, your signer or Google Build to um, generate that key store. You have to manually um, upload your APK to the, to the Google console. And building and deploy, you have to manage your own certificates. You will have to, uh, if you were to do it in uh, for iOS, you could upload the build via Xcode. That takes a little while, and it could you could get some errors, and it's just uh, it's a bit um, of waiting and um, and hoping it all flies through. And finally, you get you send it to test flight, and then wait for um, approval. So the second flavor of React Native, we have Expo. So what's so great about Expo? So Expo is, think about Expo like it's a framework or more as a uh, ecosystem for multi-platform development, okay? So right now, Expo just recently released their SDK version 44. This one is also, is, uh, is, it works with version 0.64 of React Native. And why, why is it a so, why is Expo SDK 44 so great? So there's, it's a basically a universal SDK where you could use right from the get-go, you could use video, um, barcode scanner, map views, image pickers, uh, gesture navigations, and all these components, and many, many more components are available throughout all the cross-platforms, cross okay? Also, it, it has its own App Store Connect, where basically it connects you to directly to your store, to your iOS um, Apple developer um, account, and you can submit your apps through there. You don't have to manually do it through Xcode. So, um, and then also they have a key tool service for app signing for Android. Okay. And how do they do it? So they have a Expo development server that as soon as you you're you're writing your code it, it turns on and that server turns on the metro bundler that comes for free for from react native okay and there's a lot that goes in between but we you can definitely read up read up on that um so the dev server turns on this metro where now every time you update your code it's going to Go ahead and refresh in all the devices that you're running it, um, that you're previewing it. So, the server is the endpoint that you that you first hit when you type in the URL of your Expo app, and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. So, the purpose is the purpose for this Expo development server is that it's going to go through your manifest, which is a file that is inside of your your your, um, your source code. And basically gonna read the name, the, the bundle, um, URL, all the information that has to do with your app. And then it's gonna translate it, it's gonna put it into a Metro, inside of Metro Bundler. All right, and I'll, I'll show you guys how that works in a little bit. So why why also Expo? So in, in addition to the, all of the great things I just talked about now, we have also the Expo Go Client. So basically, you build your app. Once you create your Expo account, it's a free account. You download Expo Go in your device, and you could literally walk around with your working mobile app without having to go through test flight, without having to submit it to Google uh, Data, any of those things. It's just directly there. So it's really good for prototyping to show off to clients and prospects and whatnot. Um, so what about what about if you don't have a Mac? What about if you hate Mac, if you hate Apple? What about if you have Windows, okay, and you want to build a React Native iOS app? Okay, so with Expo, you can use Turtle CLI, okay, where you could, you'd be able to build iOS applications on your Windows machine. Obviously, you're not going to be able to install Xcode, no simulators for native simulators for um, for your Windows are not going to work. However, with Expo, 
you could run your app um and i'll show you with the metro bundler you could run it within and um yeah this is really cool also for example if you are trying different um or you're trying to get into expo offers snacks so snacks really is just on the web you configure you play around with the components you could um add and change and you could see it right on your screen or if you wait a little longer um you could see it on a simulator because they have you, they run the simulator or if you scan the qr code you could also run it on your device as you code in in the web how we do all the time okay cool all right so another great feature is expo updates so expo updates comes from their previous feature over the air um changes so uh what it means is that you could push you could update your app without having to submit your app through apple or google play so let me say that again you could update your app fix glitches and whatnot without having through the submission process without having to go through the submission process of apple and google play and i don't know if you i don't know if you guys have done that before but it could take days it could take weeks um just to get um your your new apk or uh, ipa file updated for your users to start um, messing with it right the next big thing best thing here is e eas so with this they just released it and basically there's three there's three commands one of one eas build or it, it will build your app in the cloud you don't have to build it doesn't run the build in your machine it runs it in the cloud and it gives you a link so you could download if you want to just manually do the transaction of submitting your app or you could also use eas submit where once it runs the build with one cli command eas submit will submit your application up into the stores and then as you need to update it eas update eas update you can push quick fixes to all your end users and this is really really cool um so what's 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 the hype about the react native and expo well not, not only because i met the guys at the react native, the react uh, miami conference they're super cool evan bacon and and uh charlie sheen, sheen um amazing guys but it's just an awesome awesome product so let's let's give, let's give it a go and let's give it a run through so let's check this out so let's say you are let me share this other screen oh you just want the audio i'm ready there we go yeah hey, that, that, that's that's what i was looking for i was waiting for that one thank you no appreciate it i'm here uh, for you uh let me uh, share this screen here Nice. Okay. Hey, Jonathan, what were those guys' names? I swear you said Kevin Bacon and Charlie Sheen. No, no, no. You're thinking of, like, movie stars. No, no, no. These are the expo guys. These are famous people. So Evan Bacon, yeah, that's his name. <laughs> so literally Evan Bacon instead of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, Evan Bacon, yep. Oh, my God. And yeah. what was the other guy? And the other guy is Charlie Sheev. Sheev with a little Sheev. <laughs> Evan, Evan Bacon and Charlie Sheev. Yeah. I think they're trolling us. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like wish.com version. So, you know. I hope they're they not. Made, right. They made Expo. No, they're not here. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're so, so cool. Um, so let's see. Let me go ahead and zoom in real quick. So how do we get started with a, um, you guys see my terminal? Yeah. We can, yes. Nice. Okay, let me use them a little more. So mm -hmm. how do we get started with a, with an expo? So you just type in expo init, like anything else you initialize. And right away it asks you what type, what is your name of the app? Uh, Florida JS. Yes. And then if we just pick blank, we're wrong with that. It downloads the, the template. And while that is happening, let me open up my 
my GitHub. Nice. Cool. So, yeah. React Native, React Miami was awesome. Damien did amazing. And Thank boom, you done. So nice. now we could go into uh, our Florida JS. And Danielle it was just asking, is it free? Yes. Yes, it is. Totally free. Great question. Yeah. yeah. And it's free to start. Even the Expo, the Expo Go account is free also. They have some some premium packages. Like if you were if you didn't if you needed your build to go faster on the cloud, you could pay extra for that. But yeah, definitely it's free. Cool. So let's see what we get right from the bat. So automatically, this is the app JSON. This is the manifest that I was telling you about, where it picks up your name, the name of the of the project, your slug, the version. By default, the orientation is portrait. You could definitely change that up. You could have different orientations depending on if it's Android or iOS. Um, the splash screen, very important. You could configure it here. Um, all the updates, um, if it supports tablet, and a bunch of really cool stuff. So let's just get started here. Let's, let's, you could do um, Expo. Let's, actually, let me run it on my, yeah, let's go here better. Okay, so CD, uh, Florida. So let's clear it out. And then we could do um, Expo start. And just with this command, we got a lot of really cool things here happening. So one of the first things is that it gives you a uh, bless you, bless you. It gives you a um, a web link, right, and a QR code where if you have Expo Go on your on your mobile device, you can scan it and it would open up your app directly in your phone. So let's and check Jonathan, out. Expo yeah. Go is an app I can download right now on the below the Play Store and, and Apple I, App Store, right? Absolutely, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you for for confirming on that. So, if I were to go into that localhost nineteen nineteen zero zero two, directly takes me into the uh, the Expo Metro Bundler, the GUI, where here I'm able to let me zoom in a little more. I'm able to share my app currently like for example if you guys were not in my same LAN, i could turn on tunnel it will run in grok you guys remember in grok how we uh, run locally um back end services or whatever really cool uh production mode so for right now i just want to pick ios simulator because i happen to be in a mac so i have the simulator and it runs starts loading the bundler while that's running we could also turn on the uh, web browser or you i could even send you a link um, via email from here and even from here you could publish your project into expo go um so let's see our app it shouldn't be that big let's see if it runs do, 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 finished nice so here we got the, uh, the the simulator. If I want to run Android, I don't want to put my computer into a halt. So I'm just going to run it in web also. So we could see both here. Nice. So here we have it running on both. If you were in the, um, so let's just make a quick change here so we could see if we can see it in action. So we could go into our code, we could go into our app JS, and in here we could uh, change it up and say, hey y'all, uh, save it, and it refreshes, refreshes on your React, on your um, iOS simulator as well as on your web. So now one interesting thing about the web, um, actually not yet. That's part of my second slide, sir. So with those small commands, we were able to run that. Um, now, if you wanted to change 
different simulator if you wanted to change it into uh, into a tablet or a, like for example an ipad you'll press the i on here and it'll give you all of the the options um actually you might have to stop it stop the server and then you run it uh yeah just with start and then if you just do shift i shift i will give you all of the uh the simulators for ios because you know you want to test your your um your app and all these different devices okay cool so while that's running i'm just going to do a post start well that's running there let me get back to the uh the presentation real quick so we have a couple of things to cover let me um where'd you go presentation here we go nice so let's go back here and guys if you guys have any questions for sure just throw them as we go this is not you know one-way street if you guys have any comments or you need to correct me because my English is not very good looking sometimes. All right, so with Expo Build, we could literally just run Expo Build iOS or Android, and it will it will have it will run the build on the Expo server, and then you you'll get a link to download the APK for iOS or the IPA for Android. All right, so. When is it good to expo or not? Like, should we always expo or not? Well, with expo, you don't need Xcode, you don't need Android Studio, you don't need all the headaches for the certificates, the configurations, any of those things. You have OTA over the air, which is now called Expo Update. So you don't need reapprovals unless you're touching like, like um, navigation, if you're touching the manifest, if you're touching any of the items um like that then yeah you need to resubmit and it's a seamless deploy two commands and your app could be live um for all of your um your users now there's some sides there's some you know not so good sides about expo where push notifications you don't have you don't have the freedom to choose your push notification service expo comes with their own push notification service but for example, you cannot use Firebase push notification. Sorry, Todd. Um, I know you love Firebase. And you don't have access to the native code. <laughs> you don't have access to the native code uh, where if you want to build your own native library to implement with React Native, it's going to be tough if, you, if you're on the Expo. And, you know, there's may, might be a little too much magic sometimes um, where, you know, you don't need the training wheels. So what's next? How about Expo Build for web, right? So what is this web thing about? So in, in 2015, this guy, Nicholas Gallagher, an awesome developer, he created this library, React Native for web. React Native for web. So it's kind of funny and it's kind of like silly. Okay, so we got React and we created it. Um, we, we created this React Native for native and then we moved it back into react for web so it's kind of like a play on words but basically they they did a, a proof of concept with twitter so now your current twitter app in in the web was is built with react native with this react native for web package and if you go through it now, if you go through it here, you will see it, that it's very similar on your phone and as if you go in, in on the website, right? It's very, very similar. So let's check that out. Let's check that out, see how, how that happens. So it turns out that with um, SDK 36, um, Expo SDK 36, they added this really cool package let me share my other screen here. Nice. Okay. They added this really cool package right here, React Native for Web. So what we we're looking at here, if we open up in the web, right? If we open up in the web, which we're running it, if you go into 
the um, the console and you take a take a look at the elements, you see that they're not React Native elements. They're they're full HTML elements after they've been compiled from React now all the way to HTML. So if you if you see, they're exactly the same thing as you get um, from a React uh, project, right? So okay, cool. All right, John, so then what? What do we do from here? How do we do it? All right, so we could do expo build web. And we're going to notice that as we do the expo build web, it runs through our production build. It creates a production build um, just like, like it happens with our regular React projects. Notice here on our folder list, we should have a, uh, a new build where we could essentially deploy to Firebase hosting, to AWS Amplify, and you have a full um, build that you could just throw whatever you want. So, you, you know, you run it and it's going to be, a, be the same thing. So that's pretty cool, I think, right? So let's let's see what else. Let's see what else we got there, John. We got all this stuff here. Let me share it back here. Cool. All right. So we got iOS. We got we got um, Android. We got also web. How about for desktop? How about how about for desktop? What 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 do we have for desktop? Well, I give you Electron and React. Together, they are able to create desktop applications for the three operating systems. The three operating systems, Mac OS, Windows, Linux. So it's basically a Chromium um, wrapper with backend node. And it has, it, and in there, we could write our React applications and Electron makes all this possible. So why, what is this Electron thing? Why, I've never heard of it. Okay, well, the VS Code that we write our code on is run, it runs on Electron. Or WhatsApp, when I talk to my family in Boca Raton, Colombia, um, it, it's run, it runs on Electron. My Twitch, Slack, InVision, they all run on Electron. So it's really, really cool. So, okay, so what does this have to do with Expo? So Expo picked up on that and they're like, okay, so how about we make a, uh, a, uh, a package for that, a library for that? Awesome. Cool. So you're like, man, for that stuff, really? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. So let's take a look. Let's take a look, see if this thing works. My machine doesn't die. Uh, let me share my other screen here. Sweet. And the call is going to end in 10 minutes. So I'll try to make it quick. Let's see if I can extend it. Okay, cool. If and not, everybody can join the link in a couple of seconds right after it. All right, cool. So, okay, let's see. So we could do yarn, expo, electron, and that's not gonna work. Let's just not, it needs the ads. So give me a second. Let me find it real quick. And there we are. Okay. Ah, there we go. So we do it like this. Yarn add, electron adapter, and basically is applying um, the whole electron on here. So let's see if we can get this running on electron. Okay. So Let's see, you guys are seeing that screen. Nice. Okay. So let's let me show you what that's running. Let me show you what Expo. Expo um, snack. So literally you just go Expo Snack and you have the code of a regular mobile app in React Native, as, as you notice. So in React Native, there's no there's no bootstrap. There's no CSS per se. However, we could use and leverage the style sheet 
component that comes from React Native for free. So in here, you're able to change your code. Um, like let's say, hey, okay, uh, let's say, pour it down. Yes. Hmm. I just save. Well, I didn't have to save it. Right away, it just updates. So from here, I could see my code on iOS or Android, but it does put you in a queue. So you have to wait for that queue, which you should be pretty fast. Let's not go through that. All right, so our expo is done. So what we can do is yarn expo um, electron start. And that's not going to work. Let's see, let's see why not. So we have uh, to run it, yarn expo start. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it did. Uh, might be my version of um, I had this issue before. Hmm. Give me one second. Their documentation is phenomenal. Um, so this is the usage. Yep, Electron install it on dependencies. Reacting it for web. Comes with that. Uh, I think we need this web pack thing. Um, but trust me, if you run through this, it's gonna work. It is very, very, very cool. Um, I have it in a repo up in my GitHub. And basically to run it, uh, you use that and it'll run for you. I've even deployed that same version in inside of the um, uh, AWS uh, Amplify. Cool. So let me go back to the presentation real quick. Uh, start screen and the screen we're going to share. Yep. All right. So let's get back to the uh, first my, my presentation. Uh, where did you go? Presentation, presentation. The one that says desktop, really? Yeah. There you go. All right. So um, because of time, I don't want to troubleshoot that desktop um, for Electron. But trust me, uh, I had it working, all three of them. And it's super cool. Um, so with React Native Expo, built for Windows, iOS, Microsoft, Linux, and Android, right? So. Isn't that awesome? Like when I saw it, I was like, what? I could make with one source code, with one code base, I could make all these three things. Obviously it's not the silver bullet that is going to work for all, um, for all scenarios, right? If you have really intricate applications, it's not gonna work for all, but um, that's all I got for, for this, for now, any, questions right now is a good time while i try to get that i have a question and i even left one in the chat comments it meant let's hear it james go go is there an automatic is there an automatic value that allows the app to switch between portrait to landscape and that's not part of react it's a part of the manifest inside of your expo project and is the app that json so yeah by default it comes with a with the orientation portrait but you could definitely um leverage if you want it for for ios to be different okay um i have a, another question yes sir uh what would you say would be like a good way to get started with like react native development like how would you because there's a lot of information to consume that you provided. Like, what would you say would be like the best, best way to get some building blocks? Cause the React Native ecosystem, though it's similar to React, there are some nuances that I can, I can tell. Yeah, so, so definitely let's start with Expo. Um, okay. don't, don't go the, uh, don't go the CLI way. Now, once you're inside of Expo, if you run, if your app is like, full blown and you find like Expo is just too uh, constrictive or too uh, limited, you could always eject 
out of out of expo so mm. yeah definitely start with that um and just a one follow-up question uh you said that you deployed this app using aws amplify could you right. explain like AWS Amplify, is that like AWS is, is that a service or what is AWS Amplify? Sure thing. So let me, let me, uh, let me show you that real quick. So, um, on James, your question is here in iOS. So if you, um, Google real quick, like, um, Expo or actually just react native, um, iOS, uh, uh, JSON, JSON, it has a, uh, actually it's part of Expo, where you could, you could change your entire configuration here. So if you wanted your um, different platforms to be, the orientation is here, and it's, it's you could change it right there with the orientation. And for Roo, I was going to show you the eject, the eject command, where you can always eject out of Expo and go into CLI. So you don't need to like always think, oh my God, I want to do my push notifications in Firebase. You don't have to use Firebase. The Expo push notification service is amazing. You don't have to like go through the troubles of CLI um, to do that. So definitely go into Expo and get started through here. Like it's they have their their documentations far more uh, far better than the React Native documentation. Uh, so native and like this is documentation for for React Native. As soon as you get started, it's gonna ask you um, where in the environment setup, which is most important and the biggest headache is the uh, Expo CLI or React CLI by itself. So definitely go with Expo, okay? All you need to do is add this, you're on global, um, Expo CLI, and right away you should be able to create your first project for React Native. Seriously? Yes, hmm. sir. Yes, sir. And for your question of Amplify, uh, let me show you real quick. So Amplify is, the version, the, you know how React, I'm just React. You know how Google has GCP, right? GCP has like their buckets and it has like clusters and it has servers and all that stuff. So Firebase is their plug and play version, right? So Amplify Studio is the plug and play version of, uh, of AWS. Ah, I see. Uh, and then in here, I've been able to, I was able to create really quick. Um, let me see if I can log in real quick. Um, yeah, let me see if that works. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, cool. So I was able to create really quick a um, web. I, grab, I was able to publish my my uh, my this one of the projects that we just did. Um, let me see. Is it here? Let me see all the apps and. Oh, because I'm on Ohio. Okay, let's change to the East. And it's free also. Yes, you need a credit card to, to log in. Um, if you're going to do, oh, look, here it is, my Expo React Native for web. Yeah, so here, um, if you if you wanted to run the backend development, I'll show you that now. But the hosting, it gives you for free SSL certificate, just like the plug and play Firebase gives you. So here, I was able to create with React Native, I was able to create whatever. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's an app, whatever. But it is um, web build for that. So, and if you were to go into the backend, um, you could launch Studio. Studio is the version of like the Firebase. So this is what it looks like. And uh, you could you could host your functions here, GraphQL. Um, your 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 data you could when you, or your storage it actually stores it in a uh, S3 bucket your function runs in Lambda. Um, one of the coolest things about Amplify is that you know in Firebase you have to use like Firebase Deploy or whatever. Here 
you can connect it directly with your um, with your GitHub branch. So as soon as you push your code up to, to your main branch, it runs through the whole um, it runs through the whole uh, deploy through here. So oh, wow. yeah, and, and I'll, I'll show you I'll show you some more amplify on that. I, it's really cool. But um, any other questions on React Native stuff? Um, be happy to answer. I was just going to say, um, last year, I wanted to learn a bit, a little bit about React Native because I have been doing some React for work, but not React Native. And I thought if a project comes in the door, it would be better if I was a little bit prepared. So uh, at our company, like internal hackathon that we do so about two or three times a year, I decided to do like a toy project in React Native. And I realized kind of like partway through uh, like I really want to demo this on my phone, but it's going to take forever to figure out how to do test flight and all that stuff. Uh, I hadn't touched any of that in a long time, and I knew it was all different. Um, and I think I stumbled on the Expo through the React Native docs, like you just showed us, nice. and gave, gave it a try and like had my app running on my phone really quick so I could use it as part of my, my demo at the end of my project uh, of our little hackathon. And it was, it was, I was, I was really impressed. I ha haven't had a chance to use it for a real project, but yeah, you know, it was definitely a nice experience. Yeah, definitely. I, I, when I, when I came in across, I was like, man, I, I had a friend that needed a, a mobile application and I had no clue how to do it, but man, export has been such a blessing, I think. <laughs> so yeah. what you, what is your thought on the uh, new architecture that's supposed to do away with the JavaScript bridge? So like backwards compatibility and, and what is it really bringing to the table? What is Bridge bringing to the table or the new The new one, the newer one. I think it'll be 0.69 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, honestly, honestly, I'm not sure, man. I haven't really looked into that. Um, yeah, I focus more on like just the logic, the code that I'm, that I'm running on the React side. So I, I didn't understand that. What, what, that was a little some of the little trolling. Did you say it's removing JavaScript? I think he's joking. No, the JavaScript bridge that they call it. I think supposedly it will be able to compile to native, kind of like Flutter. I think does makes binaries. Got it. Got it. I, I, okay. All right. I I never understood why they need to do that. We we had a, a at work a, a need to my apologies a need to uh, compile Node. Um, and there was, uh, you know, more for obfuscation than anything else. But uh, you know, the the code doesn't run any faster. Um, I, I've always been impressed by people that have convinced themselves that JavaScript is the problem, that uh, that uh, uh, language <laughs> that is part of the CPU, the M1s, and going back to the Intel uh, part of the CPU has uh, JavaScript uh, in the CPU code base that's designed specific with JavaScript. How People are insisting that it's the slower piece of the, the reaction. So, you know, uh, good for them if they will. You know, it, it's all about marketing, right? We want to sell more and more, but uh, I doubt there's going to be an improvement uh, in speed. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in a video, but honestly, I didn't. I didn't quite understand like what they're going to replace bridge with. But um, that'd be that'd be a cool thing to research. Thanks for that question, man. That's good. Yes. So one of the things uh, I like, Rui, your question, which was you're looking for like other places where uh, we might learn a little bit more about the latest about React other than the Expo page. Um, do you mean like resources where we can see examples, some different demos? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, I'm just just because I'm like, I really want to get into mobile development. And because right. you know, I'm primarily I'm a web dev now, but I definitely want to build mobile applications that are presentable i'm just trying to go about it like learning how to learn the right things like yes and obviously you know programmers make painful mistakes that's how we become better um <laughs> i'm just I trying to that. find out like you know if jonathan could hop in a time machine and go back to when he was first learning react native how different would he go about it Ooh. yeah yeah definitely i wish there were more people talking about it <laughs> like, like we more, are, now, man. That's a good point. More presentations. Yeah. More I presentations wish, uh, on different I wish, meetups. I wish there were more people like talking about it because it's just so so easy to get started. Um, 
once you get to play with like like libraries that you bring in into your into your project, then you start seeing some some issues um, where you have to make sure that the versions align and all that stuff. But man, just to get started, um, just like I showed you, you know, in this past hour, it's been been a blessing at least for, for me. Um, so yeah, just Expo, man. Go directly to Expo and start building any project and. Grab like do you know like I did a snake uh I did that what's a flying bird game that you that's like a flappy bird flappy, birds. flappy bird flappy bird yeah flappy bird I did a flappy bird I, I can't find it right now but I did a flappy bird and um I did it I did a tutorial and all that and and I was able to to see it in all three like in desktop I was able to play it in desktop I was able to able to play it on the web and on my phone and that that was really what like I was like whoa. This thing is powerful. So definitely just, you know, go out there, get a tutorial, start going through it, and just just start, man. Don't 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 be afraid. So Danielle had uh Danielle had a, a great question here. Uh I love your, your answer from from anybody that, that wants to answer it. Is there any steps or um directions I should take when considering converting a server side application or a web application, I guess, to mobile? You know what I mean? So what should we think about when we think about that? Sure. So so Expo, I didn't talk about this, but Expo uh, has also created a um, a uh, library to use with Next.js. So well, I don't know if you guys have, have uh, used Next.js, but basically with Next.js, you don't need a separate API. You don't need a separate API or server because it does the server functions for you. It has its own, you could you could build your own um, API functions inside of Next.js. And in there, you could you could plug in also the expo. Here, let me let me show my screen real quick. You could plug in the expo for Next.js. And that's next level, at least for me. That that was like, whoa. Like I love I you guys know I love um I love Next.js, and recently I was able to like really play with with the API capability. So I was able to create a, a SendGrid connection into like a regular form, but inside of my net my Next.js um, app. So basically, you just add, you just add. Um, well, here they have a, a template with a with a dash t Next.js. And now you have a full Next.js app that will work with Expo using React Native. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So you, you, you're talking about building a website without an API endpoint. And um, uh, I, don't, I don't appreciate you making fun of the fact that I've used to build websites like that in Perl back in 1996. I think it's in, it, 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 you're, you know, I, I, I know you're being ironic. Uh, we do things API. We don't do things like I used to do 23 years ago and, and 20 four years ago 26 years ago yeah. long time ago so uh, i don't appreciate the joke okay yeah so that's old school man we got it all this white hair you it's know, api not... baby it's api and nothing no 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 no, no. The api inside and then you you build it you build the next project in your computer and you right away with with vercel you just deploy it and they'll give you a free ssl we, we have we have the data, we have the, the server side build, we put it up there, we build in React, so we need an API, then we merge it to back together with Next.js, and then we open up uh, JSJS to APIs so that the mobile can, can get it. I get it now. Yeah, that's 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 cool. Let me let now me you're making fun it. of me now. Yeah, that's that's next level, man. Um here, so Danielle has built it with MongoDB and Next.js, so she's ready. I love that mundane. Nice. There Fantastic. you go. So this is like this is one that I built um, recently, and look, I have um, well, this one doesn't have the the direct um, SSL, but it it gives you the SSL certificate for free. It connects into your 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 repository. So as soon as you push to your master or main branch, it listens to it and it runs through your whole uh, deploy. And uh, it's just, it's just sick. I love. If I can just comments. add, it also lets you uh, check 
at other branches if they're working properly before you merge. Exactly. So, so if you have that's what we use in in um, at City, where we have we have different branches. We have like staging branches. Actually, we create a a uh, environment per branch that we push up. So dynamically, it creates its own link and its own little um, hosting for that branch that you push up. So yeah, that's that's next level. That is amazing. And uh, that, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm joking the, around that, that uh, you know, uh, but, you know, we, we have those solutions because we have those problems. So that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, Danielle. Danielle's ready to give it a try. Please, Danielle, uh, don't, don't, uh, everybody, uh, um, there's, there's a few of us talking. Feel free to unmute yourselves and, uh, you know, ask uh, Jonathan any questions. If you, if you feel like only uh, typing, um, uh, I know Big Lewis wants to type, I'll read you, uh, Big Lewis, in just a second. Uh, but feel free to, to unmute yourselves and talk. We, we want to make it as comfortable for people to talk in here as possible. Okay. No, I just, I just told, uh, told Danielle that. Uh, the best option for converting a uh, web application is first converted to a React web. Then when you feel that React web is not enough for your mobile, then go to React Native. And then after, if you even need even more speed, then you have to go to fully native. But uh, you have to follow those, those steps first. If you don't do that, then you could be over killing your application or over overdoing for your application. Over engineering, yes, sir. Over engineering, yes. Yeah. That's yeah, the the reason why I was asking is because I built a, something with just EJS and, and it's server-side rendering um, type of application, you know, when I was first starting. But it's actually like my best application and it should be an app on the phone. <laughs> so Love I it. Should. Yeah, uh, it's in general, most yeah. applications right. doesn't need too much power. So. If, so if you already can do, do some applications could work in in in, in web very seamlessly without uh, being native. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your application. So most likely, if your application is still working as an ASP, it will work perfectly in in a mobile in a web browser and mobile environment. So. Yeah, okay. if if I I want to put in the app store it has to be native right so so yeah there's there's different ways about that so one really like a like a hack that i really resonate um not a hack but um yeah it is a hack um todd told me but basically with react native you could there's a library where you if you make your application responsive and like make it look really good responsive so React, this React Native package, it wraps that, and you can submit your app to the app stores like that. So you don't have to create it fully, 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 like from scratch. You could wrap it with this package. That's, that's Oh, thank you for finding that. I really didn't know that, I think. Yeah, let, let me find you the package real quick. And um, if, you're, if you're using Vue, uh, Nuxt.js is like the next JS for React. Yeah, also Ionic gives you now the, the possibility to program either Angular, React, or, or Vue. Um, so basically, you just take your code and paste it in, into an Ionic project, and you just created a, a, an Ionic application. Yeah, actually, I, I did that uh, quite a lot with Vue and we wrapped it with Cordova. Um, so if yeah, you build it in Vue, you can wrap it with Cordova or Ionic, and boom, you have a, a, a mobile, native mobile application. It's not native, it's just a wrapper, but it feels like, like native. Yeah. So you're you're getting all the benefits like... of native. No, nobody's yeah. going to realize it's native. The App Store is going to allow you to be in there, should you wish to. Um, and just to remind everybody, um, as a user, and this is what I do for work, right? I mean, just be conscious of the fact that you have to be aware of what the user is doing. So a lot of users have fought back, you know, uh, from the fact that their iPhones are running out of space and, and decided not to install apps. So, you know, a PWA might be another option. Uh, I think that's what Lewis said a little bit earlier. So just be aware of that. Uh, but this is just amazing stuff.
So I love the fact that the, we had React Native, and then we have React Native for web, and now you introduce this to React Native for web for desktop, for mobile, for Ionic. Yes, um, so you know, it's fantastic. Any more questions, please bring them on. Basically, what I'm hearing is if you write a badass React Native project, you you can ship it anywhere. It could be a desktop app, mobile app, and a web app. Exactly. That's awesome. Exactly, exactly like that. Now, just you know, just keep in mind that there's no CSS in React Native, so there's not like AMD or or Bootstrap. You do have to install like maybe React Native Elements or Native Base, which is our like um, helpers uh, that have the component um, uh, styling and pre-built so that you don't have to like do write everything from scratch. So those are the only things that you're gonna run into, you know, when you run, when you create React Native for all these devices. That if you want like like Canva. Uh, animation like the Canva HTML tag animation that you're gonna have a really hard time to get that to work on your React Native. So there are some limitations, but if it's really um, streamlined, straightforward, man, you should definitely try. All right. So how's everybody doing? Everybody has a good time so far. You like that Florida JS is back? Uh, I think we skipped uh, one month. I do apologize for that. Uh, hopefully, we will go ahead and make sure we never miss, miss any month. Uh, please keep the, the, the questions coming uh, for uh, for Mr. Jonathan. Uh, I am getting ready the win.floridjs.com. We always do it at the end of the month. But as we do this, go. I, I, I invite you to come over to, and I'll put it here in, 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 the, in the chat, win.floridjs.com. That link will work. Even if meet.floridjs.com did not work, it will work next month. And go ahead and check it out. Uh, you can go ahead and get your ticket in there. The uh, prize right now is for a license for um, the uh, JetBrains uh, people, uh, from the JetBrains people. Uh, JetBrains is the same people that give you PHP, Storm, and WebStorm. Um, they will actually give you any license you want for a year, and it's just a matter of uh, winning. Uh, I do have one. It looks like, yes, I have one. Wait a minute. Do I have one or do I have three? Hmm. All right. Let's say I have three. Somehow I have three. I shouldn't have three. But let's say we have two. Has anybody uh, had any trouble going to win.floridajs.com? No. James, your question about home use. Um, you can use no. this software anywhere you'd like. You can use it for your corporation as well. It is a license for a single license. So it can be used in any which way you want. All right, so I see people coming in. There's nine of us already coming in. If there's anybody else that uh, wants to come in, please unmute yourself. Let let me know that you're struggling quickly to uh, get to win.floridjs.com. All right, I think we, we, we have enough people and, and everything. Uh, let me give it away before we continue the conversation with uh, four different things. One of you has a number seven. Uh, should, should you, uh, found yourself being in there or do me a favor and, uh, there's no way really to, uh, to, um, send me a personal email, uh, but you can, uh, find me in the Slack or the meetup. Um, okay. Oh yes. Jonathan has a website. Jonathan, what do we, uh, you know, check out Jonathan's website on the chat there. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll let you talk in just a second. I want to go ahead and let anybody know that on meetup.com, meetup.com slash FloridaJS, this event space, you can contact me out of the organizer in the top right corner of the screen. Click on it. Send me a message that you are number seven. Uh, and let's, let's get uh, a little bit uh, more giving away. And if you're number two or number seven, uh, heck, just in case, uh, if you're number 11 as well, uh, you've won. Contact me through either any which way you know about me. If you know me from any of the Slack channels on Tech Hub South Florida, uh, I'm there, techhubsouthflorida.org slash Slack. Uh, I'm there all the time, especially in the humor section or the chat uh, on the developer channel to help me out there. And uh, in meetup.com slash you can find out more about me. Do me a favor, if you like the experience, and, and Jonathan has been very, very kind. He's volunteered to do this, but he would like for you to go to uh, youtube.com slash That's the only thing I ask you to go ahead and 
and subscribe and make sure that all your children and, and, and relatives subscribe to it, even if they don't have a computer. So I uh, thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, if the continue conversation, we can. Please, I needed to just get that out of the way. But uh, yes, Bob says, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Damien. Thank you, everybody here. You don't have to go anywhere. What's the, what's the saying? Links to YouTube. YouTube.com slash Florida JS, as in JavaScript. Jonathan, amazing presentation. Sebastian, have, what did you want to say? Tell us. Uh, I just have a quick question. How proficient uh, do you have to be in React before even thinking about jumping to, to native? Yeah, that's a good question, Sebastian. And thank you for joining, man. That's really cool to have you here. Um, yeah, you, you have to be proficient um, because you, it, it takes React to the next level where your, your routing is completely different, where you're, you're passing props in and out, where your JavaScript um, skills are really going to take into place because you don't have regular CSS um, in Bootstrap to Bootstrap your application. You will have to like really know all the, you know, not the ins and out, but definitely at least understand context um, for a store management um, as you pass in and out. Like for example, authentication, you want to make sure that all the screens have um, a state that you could always refer back to. So yeah, definitely start with, with React, get really good. And then, you know, then when you get when you get a little confident with React and you understand context and you're able to build like a full blown React app, definitely jump into React Native. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for 